Having lived through a decade of civil war, Sierra Leonean parents know what days of lost learning mean. We in Africa, if education is not with the children, we just continue with the poverty, poverty, poverty. Starting in 2014 and well into 2015, Sierra Leone was hit hard by an Ebola outbreak. The economy came to a halt, curfews were imposed, and gatherings discouraged. Schools were closed for eight months. During the Ebola crisis, I was at home because my mother did not want to make me sick. Working in a challenging environment, the government, parents and students in Sierra Leone did what they could to minimize the impact of the disrupted education and recover after the crisis. Wishing to draw lessons from Sierra Leone's experience, a team from the World Bank carried out a short study. Here's what they found out. Welcome, boys and girls. Radio programming provided learning opportunities which may not have existed otherwise, but it could not replace proper schooling. The government, with support from donors like the World Bank, Global Partnership for Education and UNICEF, launched an emergency radio education program based on an abridged school curriculum. When it became apparent that schools were not going to reopen within a very short time, we thought that uh, we should find a way of bringing education to the children. Five days a week, 30-minute lessons were broadcast across the country. At the end of each show, listeners could call in with their questions. Sierra Leone schools reopened in April 2015, but the community's confidence in health and safety measures had to be won before parents could send their children back to school. Parents were hesitating. They said, since the Ebola has not done, Finally, how are you going to take care of our children? People thought it fit that they should ask for preventive methods. We are asked to go and see how they were demonstrating the hand washing, you know, so we allowed them to go to school. When they opened the school after Ebola, I was happy because so many months we were sitting at the home. When we come to school on that day, I was very happy. And when we come to school on that day, I was sad because our majority of our friends died during the Ebola season. As of October 2015, when school census data was collected, at least 1.8 million students were enrolled across the country. Though this number is an increase nationally over the pre-Ebola period, a closer look shows that the districts that were hit hardest by the disease have not yet fully recovered. I will go to school at the age of six years. My mama can die. Now I stop for good school. As the class will be stopping at class five. Among those who continue to feel the setbacks of Ebola are the thousands of schoolgirls who became pregnant during the crisis. Because the school system in Sierra Leone does not allow for pregnant students in classrooms, special learning centers were put in place in order to cater for these girls. We are here to capacitate them academically, make them feel belong in the, in the, in the community and to get into the normal school system. Those girls, many of whom have lost both parents to Ebola, must now work harder to return to school while providing for themselves and their babies. On September, I want to go back to school because education is good for us. If you are sitting at home, you are not doing nothing. It's not good for your future. In Sierra Leone today, life is returning to normal. In the fall of 2016, schools will resume their normal academic calendars and the education sector has opportunities to build back better. As with any other post-conflict country, the initial focus is really let's get the kids in school, right? And that is what has been happening since 2003 
till now and stage two is what we are in right now. Let us focus on quality and focus on infrastructure. Donor partners are working with the government to refine the abridged curriculum, train a strong teaching workforce and build an even better education system for Sierra Leone's children.